What's going on, saints of God? This is your brother Tony with another word of exhortation from a martyr's confession. And this message is a bit more sad and dark. Today, Consuelo, my mother and I, went to a funeral. However, the funeral was of a child and he was just a little over a year old now we think that our children will someday bury us but reality is that we at times have to bury our children now of course nobody wants that but it happens and death is tragic it hurts it saddens us recently my grandfather passed away and two years ago five months apart two of my childhood friends that are like family to me passed away both in motor vehicle accidents one of them was my son's godfather I went with him to Raquel's funeral five months later I gave the eulogy at his funeral and the sad thing is is that death at times can divide we blame ourselves maybe we blame others and we can blame God why God why it's unfair what you did so what do you say when somebody faces such tragedy, especially a child, death, a child of, a death of a child, what do you say? What can you say? What words will make that pain go away? I can't think of any. Of course, as Christians, Christianity is about love. So, yes, we have to love on them. Pray for them. Pray with them. Let them know they're loved. You know, we want to talk to them. We want to help them. We want to love on them to make that pain go away. But the pain is there. And only Christ Jesus can truly comfort them however the beauty of it is is that christ lives within us so we can show that love as well romans twelve fifteen, king james rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep you're supposed to celebrate and be happy with people but we're also to weep with people to comfort them to mourn with them in a situation like today where a child was buried. As Christians, we need one another to show each other the love of Christ, to help a person up, to stand by their side and let them know they're not alone. Though Satan, with those fiery darts, make it at them to make them maybe doubt God, doubt Christianity. Doubt their own life. What do so many of us turn to when a loved one passes away? Alcohol, drugs, maybe even women. But none of those things can do what Christ does. Our Lord and Savior tells us himself, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Christ knows our human emotions, that we're sad, we're hurting. When Christ went to the tomb of Lazarus and he seen those people he loved crying and lamenting and hollering because of their loved one, we see how Christ loves us and loved them because he himself wept. And it says, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Amen. Christ will comfort us. He is on our side by every single step. 
you know, they got that beautiful poem of a man who's dreaming that he's walking on a beach with Jesus. And he would look back and there's two footprints. And whenever, because his life was playing, if I'm not mistaken, in the sky. So whenever everything was going good, there were two footprints. But when things got rough, there was only one set of footprints. Then he says, Lord, why when I needed you the most? I only saw one pair of footprints and you left me all alone. And Jesus says, those were the times that I carried you. But y'all know what I believe? I believe the true story. There is only one set of footprints all the way through. Because Christ carries us all the way through. He will be in the fire with us emotionally or physically. Greatest example are the three Hebrew boys who went into the fiery furnace. And it says that there was a fourth person that looked like the Son of God. Capital S, capital G. So we see Jesus with us every single step of the way. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Prayer. He hears our prayers. Anything that we ask in His name, the Father will give us. Now, of course, we have to keep that scripture in its proper context. And Psalm 147, verse 3, tells us, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Talking about God. Now, bindeth up their wounds doesn't necessarily mean that... He's going to come down, and if we fall, He's going to put a bandit on our knees, on our knee that we, that we scratched up. All of us have wounds. Some may be physically, some may be inwardly. We all have struggles. We all have things that go on in our life that no one may know about. But I encourage you, talk to somebody. If you're a woman... Talk to a fellow sister. If you're a man, talk to a fellow brother. We need one another. A Christian, being a Christian is not being an island. We need one another. This Bible calls us soldiers. Whenever two countries go to war, you ever see one person trying to fight a hundred people? No. They go in as a unit, as a as an army and you know wounds can also be the inner wounds of a family member that we may see struggling with addictions maybe pornography alcohol drugs I remember when I was younger I can't imagine what kind of wounds I put in my mother's heart when I was running them streets um you know, drugging, drinking, acting stupid, all kinds of ungodly. I would be gone for days. Don't call home, let nobody know I'm okay, nothing. One time my mother even called hospitals and jails to see if I was in one of them. <laughs> Can't imagine. And I and it hurts to know I did that to my mother. But thank God for His grace that bindeth up our wounds. Because we have a lot of regret, regrets too. Maybe something inside of us haunts us. Oh man, I remember X amount of years. I don't see how God can love you. We may do, you know, we may slip up and make mistakes and think that God no longer loves us. Or that we ain't truly forgiven because of the things we may do it, you know, sometimes. So we have these wounds inside of ourselves or in our mind that Satan would try to use against us to make us doubt, to make us fear, to make us fret, to make us depressed. Yet Jesus Christ, our mediator, is there every step of the way, giving us blessed assurance that we are His. And
one thing I always encourage people, you know, we know that death is only the beginning. Life is a vapor of smoke or whatnot. Like a steam here one second, gone. But death is just the beginning. Many of us think that we are a body with a soul. No. We are a soul with a body. One day, this right here goes back to exactly where it comes from. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, we go back in the ground. God, when he created man, dug into the dirt, formed him, blew his breath into his nostrils, and he became a living being. If you go outside right now, you're, you're home. Scoop up some dirt and take it to a lab and see what's in it. You will see that the dirt has the same exact things in it that, that we do. The same elements. The same, I guess, chemical makeup if you, if you want. Minerals. Salt. Water. Air. Everything in the dirt is in us. So one day this body will go back to where it came from. However, the soul goes on either to eternal life in paradise with Christ Jesus or to hell. The child of God, we are blessed because within the shell we have our soul and the Holy Spirit of God that guides us, that corrects us, that warns us, that convicts us. The Holy Ghost seals us and shows that we are the children of God. And we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ that makes us righteous. Sinful man stands justified in the sight of God because of the finished work of the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What a true blessing. And thanks to that, we one day for all eternity will be with Christ in heaven. We may miss this person here on earth, but there is nothing. We could try to give him all of the earthly goods right now. But there is nothing compared to what they experience in, in heaven. You know, many people talk about what well, you can get. You, all these different rewards in heaven for our earthly good and things we do. This prize and, 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 and this reward and this and this. Sounds like a game show. Me personally, I believe there is nothing greater than seeing Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that died willingly on the cross as a sacrifice, that we may be where he is. Paul was caught up into the third heaven. He couldn't even explain what he saw. He called it paradise. He said it should be illegal to speak about what they see. Paradise is the only word that he could think of, you know, because it's so perfect up there. John gives us a glimpse as well in Revelation 21.4. And this is a great promise to us because we mourn, we have issues, we have struggles, we have problems. People have died, whether it be a mother, a child, a friend, a brother. But yet here is an awesome promise from God to us when we make it there. And God shall wipe, wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That sting of death is going to be gone. Because it's a former thing. It will be a former thing that's going to pass away. Our mourning will be for a season. Maybe our death, if we feel a painful one, will only last for a minute time. But in this place, 
with Christ our Lord, there wouldn't be nothing that hurts us anymore. And thank the Lord that we shall be with those, our family members, friends, loved ones, who went there before us for all eternity. And I believe that this scripture goes so hand in hand with this. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save the such as be of a contrite spirit. Saints God, no matter what you're going through, inner issues, maybe with your family, maybe the loss of a loved one, the Lord is nigh unto you because he cares for you and he loves you. He knows you have a broken heart and he saves you when you have a contrite spirit. Cry out to the Lord. Let him know what's going on because he knows anyway. He is there for you. Remember, saying to God, that you are loved and you do not belong to this world. One of my favorite pastors, Elder Benjamin Winslet, broke it down like this, and I'm going to paraphrase. He says that a lot of times we get caught up in patriotism. We're Americans. But we have to remember that we do not belong to America. We are pilgrims passing through. This is not our eternal home. There are a lot of Americans that are not saved. Therefore, they are not our brothers and sisters in Christ. There are Christians in the Philippines, Africa, Russia, Germany, Spain. We are closer to them and have more in common with them than the unbelievers of America. One day, all of us shall be joined together in the kingdom that we belong to, and that is the kingdom of God. For those who are his children and who Christ redeemed on the cross. The kingdom of heaven is our final home to be with one another. But like I said, the greatest prize of it all is to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who gave his life for his sheep. Saints of God, I love you. Remember, no matter what you're going through, the good, the good Lord is with you. Much love and Godspeed.